And now, ladies and gentlemen, make a big warm welcome to the two sides contesting in today's Anzac Day clash. Entering together, the Sydney Roosters, led by Bray Thanasta, and the St George Illawarra Dragons, led by their captain, Ben Hornby. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for today's remembrance ceremony. We ask that you please remain silent until the completion of the ceremony. The ode will be read today by State President of RSL New South Wales, Mr Don Rowe. Corporal Aaron Madden from the Australian Army Band will perform the last post, which will be followed by a moment's silence, then the rouse. They shall grow not old, as we left left grow our old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them, lest we forget. Ladies and gentlemen, as we pay tribute to servicemen and women, past and present, please remain standing for the national anthem performed by musician Tanya Christensen of the Australian Army Band.
you, ladies and gentlemen. Would you please thank Anthony Singer, Tanya Christensen, bugle player Corporal Aaron Madden, the Australian Army Band, the Australian Army Cadet Union, Mr Bill Collier, Mr Ferris Ashton, the Fuzzy Wuzzy Angels, Warrant Officer Class 1, Gary Michael, Warrant Officer Class 1, Don Spinks, Graham Ennisley, Mr Don Rowe, Mr David Gallup and Mr Warren Lockwood. When we come back, it's the Dragons and the Roosters. For the 11th year in a row, it's the Roosters and the Dragons on Anzac Day. Rooster skipper Braith and Astor will get us underway in front of a very big crowd here at Elyon Stadium. The kickoff handled awkwardly by Hornby, and he brings it back out to the 10 to be stopped there. Dragons with first use of the ball, having won the past four encounters between these two sides on this day of remembrance in Australia. Mitch Rain waits a dummy half. And the play, the ball goes to the left-hand side for Cray. Works it up towards Anasta. Stopped also there by Arona. And he's just inside the 20. Here's Michael Lehman. Played over half an hour of action on Sunday for country. Again, City up there at Mudgee. He gets a carry in this opening set of sixes and George Littlewater as they come to the right-hand side. Hornby. One of their kicking options taken to ground, 20 short of the halfway line. Through Sauer, they'll kick from just outside their 20. A good opening set of six in defence for the Roosters. And it's Minicello who brings it back towards the 40 before he's dumped onto his back and slammed by Dean Young. Yeah, good chase from the Dragons after it. Some pressure from Aiden Guerra on Jamie Sauer. It meant that the kick didn't travel that far. Penny Tungavay will take it up towards the halfway line and played about five on his own side of halfway in this rooster side last week against North Queensland and again today here. Kennedy. They come back to the left hand side through Arona. And Maria Hargreaves, who played in the test match off the bench for New Zealand on Friday night, gets a touch early on. Comes across to Anasta, under pressure, puts it up in the air. A spiral bomb well handled by Brett Morris. Going back with the flight of the ball. We'll see a lot of that today from the Roosters. They are going to kick high, kick long, and try and get as much hang time as they can from anywhere on the field. That was a super take, that, from Brett Morris. Over his head, the ball swirling around, a torpedo bomb by Braith Anasta. You said we'll see plenty of it. And the wind is swirling down there on the field of Alliance. First penalty of the game for the Dragons. Off the back of all the talk about a renewed emphasis on the tackle, the wrestle and the 10 metres. An early penalty for the Dragons. Stay on, mate. We have got a number of players backing up. It will be interesting to see the impact of that. The Dragons for their, their pack. Trent Merrin, of course, off the bench. But Cray, Scott and Wayman were all involved on Sunday afternoon. Work out the second. Tap taken by Rain and Scott it is who works it up towards the 30. Dan Hunt takes it inside the 30 of the Roosters. An attacking chance early in this game for the Dragons. Another slow play, the ball, no whistle this time as it comes across to Young out the back. Hornby gives it to Matt Pryor, playing in the centres and offloading back to Hornby who cuts back to the middle. They go left, Sauer with a cutout ball. It goes across to Cooper. Not much doing for him, good defence on that right edge from the Roosters which can be exposed at times. Rain, Sauer with quick hands to Cray. He tries to back his way through the line. He's only four metres out with two plays left from Rain. An awkward ball, not handled by Soward. Young picks it up, gives it straight back to Soward, who's crunched. And crunched by Mitchell Pearce. Just outside the 20, on the last. And it's Hornby who'll put it in the air. Some pressure here on Tungave going up above Nightingale and making a nice catch. It was a good catch because he'll have his hands full, Penny Tungavay, Jason Nightingale, fantastic in the air. Good tackle there from Mitch Pearce, who kept pushing forward after the drop ball. And the Dragons losing 20 metres with the poor pass from Mitch Rain. Now the Roosters will bring it out of their own end through Kennedy. 
Taken to ground there by Rain around the legs and Hunt over the top. And Fred comes to Arona getting a chance in the starting side today. It's been Brad Takarangi who has normally filled that role for Brian Smith in recent times, but it's Arona getting a start as the lock forward today and patrolling the middle of the field. A kick goes down to Nightingale. The Roosters do plan to try and kick early if they can get some good carries from their own end. In the first few plays in the set of six. We'll wait and see how many times they're able to employ that tactic against the Dragons, who do like to drop the wingers back early in sets of six when they can. Vito playing it for Rain. It comes across to Pryor. Standing there in the tackle and taken to ground. Five on his own side of halfway. Five gone, no score. In this 2012 Anzac Day clash between the Roosters and Dragons playing for the Anzac Day Cup once again today. Good light speed there from the Roosters. And that's Dylan yeah. Orbison up in their face. And Trey's come up with the error. He's come up with the error. Good set defensively by the Roosters. Mitch Rain out of dummy half. It was a simple one for Cray. Just put it down. Again, the Roosters up in their face. They'll give the Roosters a chance from around about the halfway line to take it into Dragons territory for the first time in this game. Coming off an energy-sapping effort up there in Darwin 10 days ago. But they're confident they've recovered from that. And also the hiding they were given by the North Queensland Cowboys, where it was a shellacking, and their form has been erratic. They won their two games prior to that effort up there in Darwin. They look to be more on the pace early on here today. Guerra it is, will play at 40 away from the Dragons line. Comes from friend Verona Pierce. Gives it on, and Maria Hargreaves finds Cooper up in his face. He certainly had to do well, Matt Cooper, as he usually does defensively. Pierce cutting back to the open side, coming to Arona. And he'll take it towards the 20 in the middle of the field and supply a fast play. The ball for Pierce to run along the Aguera. He's only a couple of metres out, gets it back for Minichello. A step, a dive. I don't know that he got the ball down. I don't think he did. That will be a super tackle from Brett Morris because he should have scored from there, Anthony Minicello. The offload from Guerra to keep things going. And the footwork got him into the in-goal area. It did look like Morris was able to hold him up. He gets his leg underneath him. The ball. Oh, it's up. Oh, you'd have to say it's... it's it, surely it touched the ground there. I, I'm thinking it, there's some part of the ball might have touched the ground. Oh, it's hard to tell. Can't see, see it tell. there. But that first angle, as you say... Even though you couldn't see the ball touching the ground, you would have to think that some part touched it. The ball was very low, and there didn't look to be an arm or a leg underneath it. Oh, did he keep that hand underneath it? He, you know what? He just might have. He just might have, and it might have been Minicello's hand also that stopped the ball getting to ground. Could well have done that right arm of Morris. Up was underneath the ball. Yep. This is the fifth coming up. On first look, I thought that there was some part of the ball must have touched the ground, but I don't think so. I think they'll deny it. Now, video referee Paul Simpkins called into action early. Well, how strong is Anthony Minicello? And for Bet Brett Morris to be able to hold him up is remarkable. What a tackle, but another one up their sleeve. On the last, it comes away to Pierce. He puts a bomb across. Kenny Dow leaping for it. Left the ground from inside his in-goal area. Let him go right now. And with a catch, he'll bring it back out to the 20, and there'll be a penalty at the 20 against the Roosters. But the defenders, including that man, Braitha Nasta, not letting go of Vito early enough. Yeah, Braitha Nasta was told to let go, and he continued to hang on. So that denying the Dragons a quick start. There's Vito taking the ball, and they got the call right. He was in the, the in-goal area. Let him go. And from the ensuing penalty, well, they find touch 40. An early scare for the Dragons. Saved by a player who is 
really putting his name up in lights as far as potential New South Wales selection in the shape of Brett Morris. Here's Soward, sees half a gap, more than that. He's into the backfield, cutting towards the sideline. Gets away from Orbison, cleaned up there by Kenny Dow. He loves these Anzac Day clashes, Jamie Soward. Talking of origin selection. Not without a chance that he can produce something out of the box in the next few weeks. A big run right there. Has them on the attack. Crane goes back towards Soward down the short side. Plenty of blue jumpers there in front of Matt Cooper. He'll play it about 18 away from the Roosters line. Rain for Soward. Young is too wide of the play. The ball has on his outside early ball for Bo Scott. First man play well read by Aidan Guerra. They have one more tackle. And it will be Hornby darting out of dummy half, getting it to Soward in time. He puts a chip in over the top. Perrick was there. So was Minicello. And the man who has played in so many of these fixtures came down with a nice grab. Yeah, not his best kick, Jamie Soward. Needed to be higher to give his chase his chance to contest the ball with Minicello. Kenny Dow takes it away from dummy half, runs towards Cooper. And also Young, a good carry. They get another one here. We'll see if they do decide to kick early. Good defence, though. Mitch Rain up in the face of Wairia Hargreaves, stopping at the advantage line. As a result, they'll keep it in the hands, and they will kick here on the last tackle. It's a friend who will kick from around about the 40-metre line. He picks out Morris on the full. And they were working at avoiding that in the lead-up to this game, trying to get it away from the back three who do such a good job for the drag. Well, that's a couple of times now. They picked up Nightingale on the full. They were trying to avoid it. They do have the breeze. Although it is swirling down there, it is favouring the Roosters, and they haven't been able to take advantage of it yet. Here's Wayman. He'll play it about 42 away from the Roosters' line. They go back to the short side for Sauer. They like their chances down that left edge. They've gone there time and again in the opening 10 minutes of this one. Sauer goes to Young, and now Hornby showing it. Bypassing Scott this time to link up with Pryor. But again, the defence on the edge of the field from the Roosters, both left and right, has been good. Sauer, another chip. More pressure on Minicello, but he eats it up and comes down with possession again. Under pressure there from Nightingale, who is up in his face. And now a ball dumped over the top by Leilua. He was expecting the men on his outside to be ready for it. Everybody thought he was just taking a settler. Well, the run from Leilua created space on the outside. He offloaded the ball. If Braith and Asta had been aware, the Roosters had a big chance to make plenty of metres down that side. They gave up on the play, but... Now, friend, coming across to Kennedy. Now he's stopped just outside his 30-metre line. Again, they'll be kicking from deep inside their own territory. Pierce getting it away from Morris, who has to play it off the leg. A better kick off the boot of Mitchell Pierce this time. And as a result, they'll stop Vito inside his own 30. And they do have this breeze at their backs in this first half of the Roosters. It is a southerly and quite a strong one at that. Nightingale, another of the test players backing up from Friday night's encounter over there at Eden Park with Scott. Works it up towards the halfway line. Hornby has taken on suspicion and knocked to ground as Rain gets out of Danny Half. He caught the napping. He has Cray looming up in support. Where are he's chasing? But it's the Dragons who score first points on Anzac Day. He's very good at it, Mitch Rain. He's had a great year so far, very strong out of dummy half, whether it's giving his ball runners plenty of space or darting out of dummy half himself. Not the first time he's split open the defence with a little dummy. He gets in the backfield. Ben Cray looming up on the right, did a good job to support. Guerra couldn't foot it with him. And the back row crosses for the first try of the afternoon. Now they just lazy there, the marker split. Watch the man with the football. And he gave up on Mitch Rain and he he opened them up. There's a player who was spoken about as far as the city country game was concerned up there in Mudgee. Plenty of people saying he was unlucky to miss out on selection there. They went with Ryan Hinchcliffe in the countryside and the work of Mitch Rain continues to open eyes around the 
NRL. We naturally still have Cameron King out of action. The Dragons, they are well stocked as far as dummy half options are concerned. Nathan Fien will come off the bench here today. A test player coming off the bench. It's a nice situation for Stephen Price and St George Illawarra. Jamie Soward. Around about 10 metres to the right hand side of the post. Very kickable for a player of his calibre. He slots it and makes it six points to nil. Well, they really haven't used the breeze to their advantage. We're only 15 minutes into the game, but the, dra the Roosters are giving the Dragons some pretty cheap metres off their kicks. They're not making them work it off their own line. They started their sets in pretty good field position. Up near the halfway, very early in the tackle count. One number was eight and then Cray, another player that or 11. will be closely monitored by get. New South Wales coach Ricky Stewart Thanks. today. Thank you. Stay Trying to get back into a blue jersey. Raythan asked to get us back underway. First try of the game to the Dragons, who have won this particular clash on this great day four years running. Hunt it is. Brings it back out to play it for rain. Dragons with a better of possession, 60% of it. Through the first 14 minutes now, has been just the one error in the game. And that came from Cray in the opening few minutes. Wayman plays it. Rain goes across to the try scorer. Cray working down his more familiar left edge. Come to the middle of the park to link up with the man at dummy half and get it. Very well for the Dragons. Here is Young. This will be his last appearance on Anzac Day, retiring at the end of 2012. A Sowards kick. Goes down to Tungavay. They need some good carries early in this set of six to try and employ their game plan. Coming here today, Perrin up to the outside of Cooper. And that's a better kick return by the Roosters. They'll have it on play one. 15 short on the halfway line. Tungavay. Mitchell Pearce waiting at dummy half. Sensational first 40 minutes for City against Country up in Mudgee three days ago. And we're very close to inking his name for the New South Wales number seven jumper you'd imagine. A play the ball. Not an impressive one, but a legal one all the same. Like Lua going a long way. And they take it down inside the Dragons 20. A play it here. Minicello waits at dummy half. He double pumps it before giving it to Pierce, who will kick out towards Kenny Dow and Perrett once again. Vito goes up for it, knocks it on. It comes down to Warburson, who gave it to Kenny Dow. They are going to say the Roosters, through the pass, had taken their advantage, and it's play on. Well, I don't think so. I don't think there was enough of an advantage there. It was a flick out the back immediately after the ball was knocked on by Daniel Vito. And they certainly have got past the point where the knock-on was made. Well, he just slipped the ball out the back. He hadn't gone anywhere. He was tackled immediately, Mitch Orbison, when he got the football and slipped it out the back. No yeah. advantage. Should have been a scrum with the rooster's feet. You've got to say, Matt Checkman and Ben Cummins, variation on the interpretation of what is advantage off the back of an error by the opposition team. Young playing it. Just works it away up towards the 40. Grabbed there by a Nasta. Good carry. And it gives them some precious meters before they get their kick away through Jamie Soward. A flat floating kick. Pretty well handled in the end by Tungavay. It was stopped 25 out from his own line. Braith and Astor asked the question immediately of the referees. What's that interpretation on the advantage call or non application of it, if you like? Got no joy from the men in pink here today. Perrot. They're playing for friend. They work it down the middle. The dummy half will take it himself. Pick up around about 10 metres before he stopped there by Rain and also Scott. Forces Pierce to come into dummy half. And now Lama Tarsi works it down just outside the Dragons 40. Last play. Goes through the hands of the next one. Pierce who chips it towards the corner. He wants it to sit down and sit down and it will. Morris under pressure. They try and hold him up. They did so and force him back. And this time the Roosters do get the call. Yeah, that's better from the Roosters. Mitchell Pearce 
too wide, just chipping it into the in goal area. Led the chase along with a couple of, of his teammates. Down that right side and forcing Brett Morris back into the in goal. Momentum hadn't been stopped. Maria Hargreaves, one of those players. Now it was Sean Kenny Dow and Sam Perrett, on the right hand edge. They've had a couple of chances, the Roosters, the best of them, back in the seventh minute when Minicello got across the line, only to be held up by Brett Morris, the man who was just driven back into the in goal area. Minicello with the look at Tarsi who comes storming back at them. In fact, it's Mossy Masui who has just been injected into the game by Brian Smith, and Orbison gets to the outside of Cooper. He'll play a 20 away. We approach the 19-minute mark. It's Arona who takes it within 15 of the Dragons line. Friend through the hands away to Anasta. Here's Masoy on the outside shoulder. Well taken by Scott with some help from Matt Pryor. They've used up four plays. They'll go back towards the middle and out the back to Pierce. A long cutout ball. Soward up in the face of Kenny Dow who got tangled up with Minicello as well. That didn't help their cause. Last tackle, and Pierce will chip it. Chasing through is Guerra. Knocked on again by the Dragons. Guerra came down oh, with it. My, my, just and we need to check it again. Well, it was a nice kick. Mitchell Pierce put it right on the try line, exactly where he should have. I don't know whether the Dragons... Well, there was a bit of confusion about who was to take the ball. Just check if the Roosters are on side, and they are. In the contest itself, it went over the hands of Pryor, off the shoulder of Ben Hornby. Bounced up beautifully for Guerra. It got to a quick clean, and there's no doubt about the put down this time. The only question mark could be the contest that grazed the forearm of Guerra before it made contact with Hornby there? Yeah, hard, hard to tell. You'd have to have a look at that again. As you said, no doubt he got the ball down. Did he have eyes for the football? I think he did. So the contest is all right. He hasn't taken Hornby out illegally. I think we'd have to go back and from the other angle to make sure that he didn't get a touch. On, we're not going to look at that. We've seen enough. It'll, it'll be a green light. Paul Simkin spins up the try for the Roosters. And in a moment, we should be tied up here at Allianz Stadium at six apiece. Well, all led to by the good kick and chase from Mitchell Pearce, getting a repeat set and giving the Roosters a, a good crack at the Dragons line, something that they haven't had that much of. I think the fact that Pryor jumped put Hornby off. I think Hornby had that one. He would have swallowed that one. But the, the touch by Pryor has meant that Ben Hornby hasn't had a, a clean crack at the football. And that's what saw, resulted in the Guerra try. And that's what will put it through and make it 6 all after 20. Midway through this first half. The first of two games today and tonight. On Anzac Day, it's the Storm and the Warriors to follow the Roosters and the Dragons here at Allianz. It's a try apiece, and Aidan Guerra has his second for the season. A player who has had so much trouble with ankle injuries in particular. In his rugby league career, a one-time player, in fact, with the Melbourne Storm, who saw first-rate action eventually with the Sydney Roosters. Stay behind. Ben Hornby with the restart. You'd have to say, as far as possession inside the opposition 20, it's the Roosters who've had slightly the better of that. They're across the line twice to be rewarded once, and I guess it'll be Roosters fans who would be saying that there was no benefit of the doubt for Anthony Minicello, and they could be leading the contest here at this stage. There's a Dragon player come to the sideline immediately. I think it is Bo Scott. It looks like he's hurt an arm or an elbow, but straight to the sideline. Friend going across the halfway line. There is Bo Scott. He looks to be in some discomfort as well. 
And now a penalty to the Roosters. The pressure will keep on coming on this Dragons defensive line. Just you watch. Oh, sorry. Yeah, mate. No, no. Right. There you see Bo Scott. Well, boy, he's in a lot of trouble. That looks to be a, a very serious injury, and he'll go straight up the tunnel. See it here again. This is the the penalty for holding down Jake Friend oh boy, too long, getting tangled up there with the Dragons defenders. We'll talk about the wrestle, the renewed Ooh. emphasis on oh watching it by the referees. There hasn't been too many whistles today. Three penalties, in fact, blown to this point. Here's Masoy, a chance to run towards that right Two. edge. Move now. With Dean Young there helping out prior. The Roosters deep on the attack once again from Minicello. It goes across to Pierce. Arona will straighten things and be stopped there by Hunt. And also Trent Merrin, who is out there now for the Dragons. And Nasta to the line. The battle lay Lua. Hornby up in his face. Made a good stop, but the ball came back to a Nasta. He goes across to Pierce. Short ball there for Minicello. But he coughed it up. And it's Jeremy Lattimore who works it away for St George Illawarra. Well, it was Ben Cray who read the, the short ball, and I thought Mitchell Pierce was ready to throw a long one. The Roosters had some numbers on the outside, but he went with the short one, and Minicello just couldn't hang on to it. Vito playing it. Crane gives it off to Merrin. He takes it up beyond the 30-metre line of the Dragons. Rain is across. Lattimore it is. Been very good for the Dragons so far in 2012. Has played all eight games now of this season. And Hornby's kick finds the space with Tungavay playing up in the line. Minicello comes across. And tries to link up here with Perrot. He had a chance to give the winger a chance to go further down the field. Kenny Dow likes to float back and be an option there on a quick switch to the far side of the field on those kick returns. Perrot plays it. Friend. To the he was a dragon at one stage himself, formerly a tiger before that. Now Guerra has the ball stripped away, and they'll say six more tackles. And here is Tungave. A full set of six for the Roosters coming up in Dragons territory. The man who got across the line will play it here 40 away. Friend looking to the short side, going to Arona, Minichino. Now Masoy getting plenty of touches since coming off the bench here. Six carries of the football now. He's 30 out. Goes to Pierce and now Minicello getting past Dan Hunt who was left on the ground behind the play. Stay to get back to his feet was the front row. Friend gives it to Warmerson. Good footwork. Got away there from Cooper before he was wrapped up by Soward and Crow. Pierce takes it to the line. Well stopped. Dumped on his shoulder. Charging home. Is Tarsi getting to the line and all but going across it? They'll have one more play. From a meter away, friend waits at dummy half. Goes out the back to Pierce. He grubbers Minicello. His path was blocked. The Roosters go up saying it's a penalty and they hear the whistle. And they get one. Mitchell Pierce, the grubber. And it was Minicello on the chase. No, not yet. You were willing a drag and took him out. They're going to take a quick tap and get on with it. All yours. And as to getting his troops set, they want them. He's pushing them out to the middle of the field. Jeremy Matt, get on the line. So they tap it. Get in the hands here. And the option to take the two and take the lead, but they'll look for six instead. Masoy with another carry. His friend goes flat across to Arona. Chance to try and slide in between Cray and Cooper, but they were too good on their own line. He tries to milk a penalty. Friend goes from dummy half. There's no way past Morris, who's already saved one. Minicello from dummy half goes to Pierce. He holds it up, a lovely short ball. Kenny Dow dumps it out the back. Pierce to Friend again. A try-saving tackle. Rain it was, Pierce. He's five metres out. What a tackle by Mitch Rain. Friend to Anasta. Stepping off his left foot. Coming back to Friend. There's a hole. He can't quite get through it. Off the hands of Pierce. They say backwards. No, there and will be a knock on. Yeah, and I think they're right too. Jake Friend looked like he was going to slide between a couple of Dragons defenders. What an effort. 
Well, there, was, there was more than one from the Dragons. Some try savers there. Morris involved. Mitch Rain underneath. That wasn't the only one. Mitchell Pierce looked like he was going to be able to squeeze his way through, and then Jake Friend went awfully close, popped the ball back, and the Roosters have put a hand. The Roosters have got a hand to it as it came down, and that is just look at the split of possession. A couple of penalties, a six to go call. The Dragons have been starved of it. They had some chances right there. But well, the last ditch tackling there by the Dragons was special. And Friend looks certain to score. Now Pryor flops back to the ground and there's no whistle. They're waiting for a penalty against the Roosters as Vito works it up. Let's go downstairs to Andy Raymond. Offside. You're offside. Penalty here to the Dragons and horrible news off the field for the football club as well. Bo Scott, as you saw, went straight up the dressing room. A dislocated elbow, we understand, and the club doctor, Dr. Tom Carrigan, is in there at the moment and trying to put it back in. Ouch. Boy, you can say that again, Andy. It did look serious. As soon as he it did it, he grabbed it and ran right. straight to the sideline. And he looked like it was in a, a lot of pain, the Dragons. Get the start there. Inside their own half, but Vito's tackled just on halfway. That injury will have ramifications quite obviously for the Dragons here today, but also for New South Wales in the Origin Series to come. New South Wales Blues coach Ricky Stewart here today as part of the sports crew as Morris goes down the left-hand side and Kenny Dow will play it 30 metres out from the Roosters line. For a long time since they were down here. The last time, in fact, was when Ben Cray scored back in the 12th minute of ball that comes out the back here from Merrin. Now Lattimore, that's a handoff from Hornby. And they'll hold him up there through... Masoy, Tarsi, and also a friend lending a hand. And a dummy half. Nathan Feen is out there now for the Dragons. Jamie Soward bouncing away from Leilua. Out of the line, he did well to stop Soward's run. Last play. Goes from Feen to Mr. Hornby. Who chips towards Vito. Coming down, out the back for Cooper. This will be a try to the Dragons. And they'll reassume the lead. They are masters at it in that corner of the field. We've seen it before in 2012, and again, a tap back at the line with Cooper crumbing out the back, coming up with the four points. Well, we said how underrated Ben Hornby was. His kicking game, his passing game. This time, he puts it on the spot. Matt Cooper and Daniel Vito, and Vito able to tap it back. And Cooper in perfect position there to take advantage of it. A real, a real slips catch that was. Great reflexes by Cooper. It came to him pretty quickly. He ended up holding onto it and crossing. But if they look back at this game, if they do go on to win this game, they'll look back at those couple of sets that they just defended on their own line. What a team effort there to be able to deny the Roosters, who had 85% of possession in that five-minute period. They starve the Dragons of the ball. And the Dragons work it out, get a penalty themselves and score on the back of it. Big, big period for the Red and Whites. As we were saying, a long time between drinks for them in that part of the field. And they get back down there again almost 20 minutes after Ben Cray had scored. And now a chance for Jamie Sowen to make a 12 Points to six. We'll readjust the tee here. Really taking his time. We've seen some big kicks from this part of the field on Anzac Day at this stadium, haven't we? You think back to 2005 and that that momentous conversion by Matthew Head to supply the Dragons a victory. I'm going to say it was on that spot. It's very close to it. We'll see if Jamie Soward can emulate. What Matty Head did seven years ago. In front of the big On Anzac Day, it slides away to the left-hand side. It stays at ten points to six. Two tries to one to the Dragons. A 
they say since kickoff this crowd might have built up even further they were hoping for 35,000 we might have exceeded 35,000 here this afternoon no, I think you're right I think you're right it's a terrific crowd the weather couldn't be couldn't have been better for it your whistle Benny The Roosters have this breeze at their backs for the remaining eight minutes plus of this first half. See if they can sneak in for another try before half time as Merrin works it away from the restart into the shoulder of Tarsi. He runs. Also up there was Waria Hargreaves and also Guerra. Fiend from dummy half goes out the back and it is Josh Miller. He gets his first carry as a St George Illawarra Dragon. Played so many years with the Raiders, he was heartbroken to leave the Raiders at the end of 2011. Played 113 games for them. He's on the field as a St. George Illawarra Dragon for the first time here this afternoon. Now Merritt will play a 20 short of the halfway line. Fiend comes across to Horn. Back towards the middle of the field, he takes them back up towards the halfway line, and they'll kick again off the back of points. Good field position through the boot of Sound. It is almost exclusively kicked to Penny Tungavay in this first half and away from Sam Perrett. Looking at the left winger of the Roosters, and he plays it for Pierce. And it is to Leilua, who was tremendous in the City Country game and really put his name up in lights as far as a potential origin player, didn't he? Well, he was good. He was, he was the pick of the centres, Joseph Leilua. Bounced off the ground there. Braith and Nasty getting it out the halfway for the Roosters. Good carry followed up by a run from dummy half by Minicello. Four plays gone in this set. Picks. Take it to the line. Oh, the out for Guerra, who did well. It was an awkward ball from close range and a little bit low. Little bit nicely as friend. Goes to Pierce, who puts it up in the air. Some pressure here on Morris. Minicello coming through. Anthony Minicello, who said Chooks can't fly. What a grab! Winning the contest against Brett Morris to lock it up at ten apiece. Well, Brett Morris might have denied Minicello a try early in the game, but not this time. Onside, timed it perfectly, got his body in a great position, made it difficult for Brett Morris to really get himself involved in the contest for the footy. Had eyes for the ball only. He was close enough to take a couple of steps and get across the strike. As I said, denied once, but not this, not this time. He wants to play State of Origin again. Certainly won't hurt his cause. He has reminded people of what he did last year for well New South Wales, especially in game two of the series at ANZ Stadium. He scored on that occasion. He scored the try that won them the game at the death against the Rabbitohs back in round one. And they somehow found a way to come away with the two points. And he scores a big try on a grand occasion. Here at the venue, the call, the, the home ground by the Roosters. Allianz as it is these days, they have the lead at 12 points to 10. It has been a tremendous opening half of football. Brett Morris, you don't see him beaten too often like that, do you? Minicello had the advantage of the run-up naturally, but that was some sort of effort by the Roosters fullback. And a great hit back by the Roosters and a couple of great runs from their senior men. Minicello behind, involved in that set with a great dummy half run to get the Roosters in good field position. Mitchell Pierce again getting the kick line. Here he is with the catch off the kickoff. They give it to Irea Hargreaves who charges at them. That was the tactic by the Roosters coming into this game to get kicks coming down just in front of the goal line from any part on the field where they could. And that one was absolutely perfect. Tungavay it is. He'll play it here just inside the 30. 
It's Kenny Dale, another of the Kiwis from the test on Friday night. He works enough to play it for Minicello. Tries to get away from Cray and does so successfully, but again it's Cooper. He jams in from his left centre position to make the tackle his friend. Waits for the ball. He's across losses. the halfway line. Masoy certainly is. Another good runner. Was that Lama Tarsi? Boy. It's hard to spit them at times as they go to the left hand side. Pierce puts a kick. More pressure here on Morris. And it only just beat the chasers into touch. Yeah, they turned well, the Dragons. It might have been interesting. Penny Tungavate. Brett Morris did seem to have that one covered. They ran a long way with the football again, but the Roosters, it's got to be a concern. The passing game of the Roosters really is working that defensive line over for the Dragons. They're having to shuffle and, and cover plenty of ground to make the tackles. And as we said, it's, it's either Tarsi, Masoi that have been real handfuls taking the ball forward. Okay, keep it clear, Jamie. They're a young developing side. Brian Smith in the lead up to this game is determined that at some stage this year, despite having four wins and three losses here in round eight, this side would build some momentum. Make themselves known as far as a potential top eight team in 2012, if not a top four team. They could almost put themselves in that position with a victory here today. They have the lead at the moment. Two minutes out for one half time and Fiend from dummy half is grabbed and grabbed well by Orbison. Now Hornby, flat pass there from Lattimore to Merrin. It was borderline, but they got away with one perhaps. Fiend, they don't get away with that one. Got a hand it's over, put boys. down the Roosters. With some aggressive defence, force the mistake here from Miller. Well, I don't know what they were giving the ball to Josh Miller for on the fifth tackle. Where were they headed? The Dragons. What was Nathan Fiend doing throwing it to Josh Miller? Or did he get in the road because Jamie Soud was on the outside? But not much thought went into that set. And a couple of big tackles there from the Roosters. A large set of six in defence for the Dragons here with the Roosters coming at them. Just out from half time. Friend it is. He gives it to Arona. He works it down the middle. They'll probably take one more settler to the middle inside the 20 before they go on the attack. It's a Nasta who will bump it in there. He gets it out the back though to Friend, who's had some chances. He lost it here. A golden chance before the break to extend the lead. Slips through the fingers of Jake Friend. Yeah, they still had three tackles up their sleeve. And Asta, the offload and the offloads. Not only the passing game, the lateral passing game of the Roosters. It's the offloads too. That was offload number 10 for the Roosters. The Dragons have done plenty of work in defence. And they were looking tight. We'll go to half time. Anthony, with only a two point difference, could have been a bigger one for the Roosters. Right the Dragons win the scrum, but Sally works it away into Matt Pryor. I'll gladly take a couple of hit ups and get to the sheds for a breather. Starting by two points as they are at the moment. Nightingale might have other ideas and whatever Soward looms up as he did. Uh, alarm bells from the opposition defensive line. Nightingale once again, there is the siren. And it's the Roosters in front here on Anzac Day. 12 points to 10. Over St George, Illawarra. Fair confirmation, both scored a dislocated elbow. It has just been put back in prior to halftime. We won't see him again. Injury concerns also for the Dragons. Matt Cooper with an ankle discomfort. Dan Hunt with a pinch in the neck. Both will soldier on. No injuries for the Roosters. At halftime, both coaches extremely happy with the performance on both sides of the ball. They emphasised that midfield drive before playing to the fringe. They said the winner, it's going to be the most patient side and the side with attitude certainly saw plenty of attitude from the roosters towards the back end of the first half 14 completed sets from 18 they had the dragons 12 of 15 and jake friend working in amongst his forwards especially masoy and tarsi off the bench who made a great impact he went close to scoring a couple of times jake friend only to be denied by brett morris and also mitch rain Classic try-saving tackle on the line. But still, it's the Roosters who have the lead. Ben Cray, one of two try-scorers for the Dragons. Yeah, you'd have to say that the 
the Cooper try was really against the run of play that the Roosters did dominate back end of that half. Certainly the final 20, 25 minutes, the Roosters uh, seem to be in control. Red Morris out leapt by Anthony Minicello after he denied his opposite number in the early minutes of the game. The Dragons will have the breeze in this second half. The kicking game of Hornby and Sowich should use it to good effect. A shallow kickoff bounces down the Roosters' way, and it's Waria Hargreaves who brings it back out. Friend will play. Goes across to the left-hand side. Lama Tarsi with a big fend. In the chest there of Matt Priory knocked him on the seat of his pants. Now Guerra taking it up towards Dean Young. Had some good carries of the football, Young, in that first 40. And now Arona. Working it down the middle. Good set of six through the forwards. And now they go to Pierce to kick from outside the 40-metre line. He finds the space as well. In between Vito and Morris. And Morris it is who brings it back. Stopped there by Orbison and also Kenny Dow. And the boot of Mitchell Pierce and his decision-making in the first half. Very good for the Roosters. Keep on with that sort of form in the second half in the back of what their halfback is doing. They'll go a long way towards winning this one today. The Dragons get an early penalty. And it will help them, the Dragons, too. Mitchell Pierce happy to do what the Dragons did in the first half and just punch it down this right side. I need you with me. See how it gets it near halfway. Wait for it. And it's Lattimore who takes it across the halfway line. Oh, good defensively, the Roosters cracked just the once when rain burst through from dummy half to put Crane. The Cooper try came off a kick. Now Soward gets past Leilua. Leilua chases him and cuts him down from behind just outside the Roosters' 20. Leilua has done a good job on Soward up till that point, but he came up empty on that occasion. Now Hornby goes across to Thien. Morris cutting back away from Pierce, who had to stay with him. He grabbed him by the collar, and with some help from Wairia Hargreaves, takes him down 10 metres out. Terrific chance for the Dragons to once again hit the lead. Man reaching out his shorts. Within perhaps a ball width of the line. Now Fiend goes out the back. Goes to Hornby. Young on the wraparound to Hornby again. Cryer has been doing, and they should be able to take him into touch. Yes, they do. They handled that well, the Roosters, defensively. The runaround sometimes, and we don't see many runarounds. Sometimes it can catch the defenders out, but they held their width man on man. Gee, Trent Merrin went awfully close, didn't he? Burst through the tackle of Rhea Hargreaves. Minicello did his best just to drag him back. And the big fella must have thought he was able to reach out. And you're right, it was only a ball width away from being a try. A couple of big tackles from the Roosters. OK, Jay, put him in, mate. Head down. And an early scare for the Roosters defensively. They hung on and hung on well at the death. And they work it away from inside their own 20. And it's Perrett will play it here for friend. Maria Hargreaves played the best part of half an hour game time for the Kiwis in the test match on Friday night and that losing effort against Australia. Here is Tarsi. He's 20 on his own side of half. Arona hit and hit early by Lattimore getting up out of the line. He ran on him and he did well. Now Guerra. Here's Minicello. Feeding it back, Wairia Hargreaves. Got them going backwards defensively here. The Dragons doing a terrific job. There'll be pressure here on Mitchell Pierce to kick under pressure. Down the middle of the field it goes as a result. And it's Morris who'll bring it back. And the Dragons with the ascendancy as far as field position is concerned in the opening four minutes of this second half. Here's Young. About five on his own side of halfway when he's stopped. And a bit to say to Nathan Fien as well. Shows it to Miller, goes to Hornby. Sound, did he get a hand to that? He took his hand away, but it might have been a little touch before the ball 
went to ground. Eventually he'll get back to his feet to play it here. It's a ball that goes the Dragons way perhaps. Now a ball out the back from Nightingale. Fiend gives it away to Miller and they're back in Roosters territory. Well they needed that. They've been going nowhere for the first three tackles offlaid by Nightingale to get them started. And there's that man with the ball. He was very good for New Zealand in the test match. Limited chances so far here today as it goes across to Selwood. And then he takes the ball through the hands. Tapped forward by Cooper. He had the right idea. Sean. And there were numbers there anyway Get for there, the Roosters. Had the pass Bring been backwards. Get back. Right, Chet. Yeah, mate. Yeah. We're not the ideal play on the last tackle. Jamie Sowd had to sum up what he was going Move. to do. Decided to throw the long ball. And the Roosters fence did well just to adjust. Now, penalty against the Dragons for being up inside the 10. All the talk about the referees and the wrestle in the lead-up to this week's action. A lot of it focused on the 10 metres, as it turned out, according to Bill Harrigan and also Stuart Raper. And perhaps there, the body mass, if you want to use that term of the defenders, not behind the referee. And it gives the Roosters a chance here from about 25 metres away. They'll tap it through Friend. And give it to Maria Hargreaves, who runs with the shoulders there of Merrin and also Miller. After absorbing some pressure at the own end of the field, they can apply a little bit here to the Dragons. Arona. He'll play at 10 metres away. Now Pierce comes at the back to Warmerson. Minichello on the sweep. Tries to fend away from Sowood. Needs to get to ground. Cooper was there. And we know how strong he can be. And they take Minicello to ground 10 metres away. Kenny Dow goes across to Pierce. What a fend by Tarsi, put down by Arona. Nathan Fiend might have been injured by the fend by Tarsi. He came reeling out of the contact. He has been extremely good, Lama Tarsi, for the Roosters. Both him and Masoy have been a real handful for the Dragons' defence. Knocked Nathan Fiend almost back into the grandstand with that charge. Strong defence there. It penalised Jake Friend, left too early. Perhaps the referee is making a statement in the early minutes of this second half. Just a reminder to both teams that they need to get back to the tent. There's that fend by Tarsi on Nathan Fien. And he picked up a chest injury or maybe a leg injury. He was hobbling and clutching at his chest at the same time. That's, that is Mama Tarsi going straight at you. One on one. The Dragons survive and they're back on the attack themselves. Through Miller, who loses the ball. The tackle wasn't completed. It'll be Merrin who picks it up. And takes it down within about 30 metres of the Roosters line. Fiend waits. And he gives it to Lattimore, who does well to get past the marker, Orbison. He put the A defenders either side of the ruck under pressure. Hornby with numbers. He goes back to the middle. Fiend beats one. Can't get to the line. Stopped by Friend and also Warberson. They've got two plays left from close range. They go back to Hornby. Here's Young off the right foot. Cooper grabbed there by Arona. Good tackle one on one. On the last, it's Morris. He feeds it to Sowen. He chips it. Not a great kick. Going up for it. Cray didn't get to it. Pierce cleans up for the Roosters. And again, they hang on. Yeah, not a great kick and not a great way to finish the set. Ben Hornby almost creating an opportunity for Nathan Fiend to get across the line. Here's Kenny Dow weaving in behind the play of the ball to take it up towards the third. Now a chance for Jack Bosden. First time we saw him was playing in the Charity Shield as a dragon against the Rabbitohs. He comes off the bench here today for Brian Smith and the Roosters on, against his former man. club. Come on, get back. Go. Last tackle. Go. Go. Under pressure again. Dan Hunt, who was fresh out there, was in his face. And now Morris is eternal, gets up to his feet and gives it off to Vito. He'll take it to just be on the 30-metre line. And for a moment, he was suspended in mid-air. And bring him back down the right way, or the right end up. Not enough! 
Clark. Nightingale. Play it here for Fiend. Crowded in behind the play the ball at the moment, the Dragons. And that little offload will help them get a little bit of shape, perhaps, as Nightingale goes across the halfway line. Here it is. Sowett from dummy half. Eyes it long across to Hardy as they try and work these Roosters forwards over. It's a movement across the line as Hornby takes it from the half. He has that coming with him. What a ball that was to Fiend. It took a knock going to ground. He'll play it quickly. Just outside the 10. On the last tackle again. Sour chips. Minicello flying. Coming down with it. It's still there. Sour puts a hand on it. And we need to check. Well, did he come down with it, Anthony Minicello? Or did he lose the ball on his way down? There was a dragon there, and I thought it might have been pulled out of the grasp. Better kick from Jamie Soward. Got this one closer to the try line, and that's what the aim is. On side, the Dragons. Minicello. Well, he won the battle to get up above everyone else. He had the ball there, but by the time he hit the ground, the ball wasn't there. He's in the end goal when he leaves the ground and he comes down with it. When does his foot touch the ground here? There. His left foot is there and he still has possession of the ball at that stage. I'm going to say it's a fair catch. You're going to give him the mark. I'm going to give him the catch. Okay. Let's take a look well, and just see where the possession is. Well, yeah, no. well, I think he still has it in his hands there after his foot has come back down. And I'm going to say if he's got the ball in his hands and his foot is back on the turf, that's a catch. I'd like to see it in far. I'd like to see it in normal speed. It, it... Here is our video referee. He says no try. Paul Simpkins. He says it will be a mark to Anthony Minicello. I'm going to say I agree with that. Okay. 20 meter. Okay. It did seem. And there he is, Minicello. I don't think he ever had complete control of the ball, but he still had it in his arm somewhere. Happy to go with it. Was. So are the Roosters and their fans here at Allianz this afternoon. Ten gone in this second half. No change to our scoreline at the break of 12. Here is Bosden working it up towards the 40-metre line. Playing for friend, Kennedy. There is a Queenslander. Maybe looking to impress in the lead-up to the Origin Series. Tarsi. Speaking of impressing... He pops it out the back. Friend keeps it alive. Pierce drags Cooper with him. Now Kenny Dow going back towards the middle. Bump off his own player. And Nasta, a chance with some numbers on the left of the Roosters. Guerra goes a long way. Gives it off to Tunga Bay. They just can't get them to ground at the moment. Leilua spinning. He's still going. Now he loses the ball. They're going to say it was a one-on-one -on -one strip. And now Vito on the counter-attack. Gets away from one, tackled by Bosden. Oh, gee, they needed that, the Dragons. They're on the back foot there. They just could not contain the Roosters. Nightingale skips out of a tackle and gets a pass away. Well, there's been plenty of talk about the standard of football in recent weeks. There's been nothing wrong with the standard of rugby league on display here today. It has been absorbing. Two tries apiece. The Roosters' passing game has been first class. It really has moved the Dragons defence around Craig breaking the tackle of Pierce but well held there by Orbison over the top 35 away with three players gone in this set of six he comes across to Cooper he runs towards Kennedy and also Tarsi They'll keep it going to the right hand side from dummy half Hornby back to Lattimore but they were ready for that play and Bolton makes a good tackle around the legs They've got one more, though, and Hornby yeah. takes it to the line. Grubbers, rolling ball, Minicello, so patience. He waited and waited, and his patience He's, uh, was hard, repaid. Hard, well, Ben yeah. Hornby got that ball to roll on the belly, and it started to slow up there, and it started to pull up Minicello. He couldn't have waited any longer. Whoa, that was a close thing. Where he thought about putting a little toe on the ball, didn't he? Didn't he must have gone very close? All the way and hold. Good work. Up you go. Pass across the face of one of the forwards as they Please. take it up 
and left hand side Michael Wayman back on his feet about to re-enter the action here's Kenny Anthony Minicello in the background asking the question of the referees why wasn't that a penalty for a slow play the ball now Fred off a quick one he'll kick towards the corner I wouldn't mind that staying in play in that situation, but it just beats everybody into touch. Now, you're right. It had the, the turn on it towards the sideline. The ideal situation for the Roosters would have been to keep it in the field of play. There was a number of Roosters on the chase. They turned the Dragons around. And the game plan from Brian Smith today has been a smart one. The focus of one out running. They've turned the Dragons around. They've moved the defensive line. Okay, tackles are very lock, similar, we'll but the, the Dragons have done a lot more work in making those tackles. Cooper it is. He works it away from the Dragon scrum. And we'll see if the, uh, the Roosters rather can get up off their line and put some pressure here on the Dragons. And a good run by Vito, an underrated facet of his game, isn't it? Those early carries. And the forwards have got you hemmed in. You're going to take the courage play as Sandler spreads it. They lose the ball. They're oh, yeah. going to say it was stripped. I understand, but if you've come, come out, you've had one around the legs, one up top. They can get Jamie just right there. Well, he was looking to pass the ball back on the inside. There's the low tackle, and it's square up. And Braith and Asta does strip it out. Even though he was getting himself set for a pass, was he in control of the footy? I'm going to say at worst, that's play on. And depending on which way the ball goes, with the hand there of Anasta, a kick early for Nightingale. Minicello coming across. And the Roosters will get it. Let go now, let get it. it is, here it is. Big play there from the Dragons. A little chip off the top, off the, off the tap, caught the Roosters short. And that's what they didn't need, the Dragons. After getting the Roosters down this end of the field, giving away a cheap penalty. Here Here's it is again. The nice little play there. Nathan Fien. Little chip for Nightingale. And it took Tungavay and Minicello. They haven't seen too much of that style of play from the Dragons in recent seasons. Real variation off the tap. Well, even though, even though they didn't come up with a football, they had the Roosters pinned in the corner, but they gave all the advantage away with a cheap penalty. Bosden plays it. Friends. It's across to Kennedy. Work within about seven metres of the halfway line. 16 goals still. No chance to that score at the break. Orbison, well, he gave the pass to Anesta. Well, Nesta was initially in front of the play, but it looked out of the hands that the pass went backwards, but there's no complaints from the Roosters. No, there isn't. No. Well, I think, well, I don't know. I thought the ball went back. You're right, he was in front of him, but I thought he moved back. I thought the ball went backwards. Anyway, that the referees were in a better position than what we are. OK, Brad, this is him, Jack. It might have been a little closer, having seen the replay, than it looks Second block, wait for watching the, the play live. Wait, wait, wait. The Dragons will get it in pretty good field position Out. once again. And Young works it off the back of the scrum win. Stand here, Watch it here it is, Jake. You wonder how many points half the Dragons have in them. Their attack at times in the second half of games can be uh, anemic at best. They'll play it here through Mirror. And Hornby. For Young. That pass did look forward and has been called as such. There were a couple of mistakes from both sides. Penalty from the Dragons. A couple of forward passes now from both teams. Dean Young back on the inside. Tried his hardest to make it look backwards, but after it came out of his hands. There wasn't much he could do about it. And the Roosters will get a chance to to work it out. Not the worst place to start a set. Middle field. The last four encounters between these two teams on Anzac Day have been Dragons victory. All one-sided victories of that in 08. It was 26-6, 29-0 to the Dragons in 2009. They've had comfortably 
from the past couple of seasons. A return to some of the early games we saw between these two teams at this venue when this tradition began. And now Takarangi has waited for this part of an hour to get a chance in this football game. He has a carry here and he takes it inside the Dragons 40. Here's Friend coming across to Buck and keeps it alive and Kennedy dumps it out the back. Pierce again. Good defence by Soward though coming up quickly on Orbison. Bosden feeds it to Pierce who has some room to move. Wants some backspin and gets it. Waiting is Morris. Pierce had a chance. Check this mate. And he's certainly selling it like he got a hand on the ball. Well, I don't know if he did, but Brett Morris, I thought, right at the death there, realised he was in trouble and had a swipe at it himself. And whether he's been able to knock it dead, I don't know. On the back foot, look how far Mitchell Pearce can run with the football. No problem about the players being on side there. Morris realises the bounce is going to hurt him. He has a crack at the ball. He doesn't get all of it. Does he get enough to knock it dead? Pierce underneath, gets a hand to it. He gets a hand to it. He was more than selling it. There was a touch off the fingertips by Morris, but watch the fingertips of Mitchell Pierce touch the ball right there. What an effort by the man who, with every day, was making himself the New South Wales halfback for game one. In the Origin Series against Queensland, no question about the put down. Now it's a blade of grass inside the white line. We can tell that. There it is there. It will be a green light. What an effort from the halfback. He put the kick in with the Dragons struggling. They just Morris unable to take it dead. He makes it 16 points to 10. They just can't keep with the Roosters. They are playing the game too fast. Again, the ball movement has the Dragons on the back foot. They just can't dominate the Roosters in defence. Pierce to the line and the bounce. It was a cruel one for Morris, but he was there and he was in a better position than the man chasing the football, but he just couldn't get a hand to it strongly enough to knock it dead. A great kick and chase. And the Roosters have an opportunity through Braith and Aston now to put themselves eight points clear at the three-quarter way mark of the match. Well, they can do no more at the moment to grab that and retain the New South Wales number seven jersey. And Nasta. It's a big kick in the context of this game. It's there. 18 points to 10. The Roosters lead the Dragons in front of a very big crowd here at Allion Stadium. 40,164. The biggest Anzac Day crowd. Stay behind, time you run. The biggest regular season crowd between the Dragons and the Roosters. And the second biggest crowd that the Dragons have been played in front of at this venue. We have to go back to the 2005 preliminary final against the Tigers to find a bigger crowd that the Dragons have played in front of here. A kickoff, an awkward one to handle there for Mossy Masui. But the Roosters fans here at Allianz are in full voice. An upset in the making on Anzac Day. Well, it was an awkward quick kick for Mossy Masui to handle then, and the Dragons have a real opportunity to, to jam him but they've come up with a mistake the Roosters the Dragons do get that opportunity now Nightingale takes it for a settler from dummy half they are playing here for rain and that's how it has cried there with Pierce he bumped him off stopped there by Orbison and also Kennedy rain again comes back to the middle hunts Gives it to Wayman. The They're only about six metres out, and they'll play it here with three more tackles left in this set. Soward has a low pass. Cooper. Parrott came up out of the line and eventually four. makes an impact, and he might have hurt Cooper. Four. He came up quickly, thinking there was an intercept in the offing there, and he certainly has rattled the veteran centre. Yeah, I think it's, it's a head clash, Cooper. 
Might have collided and picked up the, the shoulder or the, or the chest there of Perrett. As he ricocheted off the tackle from Kenny Dow, turned straight away and ran straight into Sam Perrett. But Perrett came out of the line, missed him originally. There was a, a slight chance there, but Kenny Dow did enough to... He's going to call you the players. This is my man. ...to stop that man, Cooper. Well, oh, jammed his neck into the chin there of Sam Perrett in the tackle. Hey, the contact. The last. Make the line! Here's the last. I'll go to the right-hand side out towards Hornby, who has it. First man play for Morris, all or nothing. And they come up with a ducking. Big tackle there from Takarangi. Decided to run the footy. He was summing up things there. Ben Hornby, the winger had dropped back. He ruled the kick out and went for the pass. Well, they're under pressure both defensively and now bringing the ball away from their own end, the Roosters. They need to get organised. A good carry from Bosden gets them going in the right direction. A fast play, the ball will also help. And Perrett, he was just about away, grabbed by a bootlace by Cray. Minicello goes to the line, then changes the angle. And off the back of two good plays, they're back at the halfway line. Here's the last. Pierce again. His kicking has been first rate today. This one will sit down. No, it will just trickle beyond the dead ball line. In the middle. Here comes Vito to get us started pretty quickly. Which is what he does. And again, makes a good carry in an early play. It's at about 13 metres on the run as now shows it. That jerking. Fashionable style of his, but oh so effective. Just play the ball. Might have been trying to milk a penalty as well as Hornby. That's a cross to link up with Soward. Now Pryor on his outside. And now Rain, a flat pass there to Merrin. It was flat at best. It certainly wasn't Three backwards. There. Move, get off him. Merrin plays it. Rain goes to Hornby, showing it. He had Young pushing up on his outside. Hung onto the ball. This will be playing number five. But Sowers turn now. Puts one in behind them. Out there was Morris playing on the right wing for the moment. Bit of a reshuffle for the Dragons. Minicello brings it back to midfield. Look at him go! A great run, Minicello. He was sprinting across to the other side of the field. How he stopped, turned and came back on the infield. Back to the centre of the field so quickly. That's vintage Minicello, that run. That is... That is 2004, when he was the Harry Sunderland medal winner. He was the best tourist for the Kangaroos and a memorable victory in the UK. Another loose ball from the Roosters, no call of a strip. And it's the Dragons who have it at the halfway line and now beyond through Cooper. They'll well, come right back at them as we approach the 15-minute remaining moment. is the difference. And two, Hunt will play it just inside the Roosters 30. And it's Rain who goes across. He gives it to Hornby. First man play there for Pryor. He keeps it alive. It goes back to Hornby. He shows it. Feigned a kick and gives it to Soward. He shows it to Cooper. Now gives it to Vito. And they'll stop him eventually about 10 metres out from the Roosters line. Plenty of tackles to work it here from close range. It's Rain showing it. Almost ghosting his way through the line as he did when setting up Ben Prey for the first try of the game. He's charging at them! Michael Wayman! The horse can carry them to the try line and beyond. He's making a habit of getting across the strike this season. A big try and an opportune moment for the Dragons. Well, I don't know how many tries he scored from dummy half, Michael Wayman. They weren't ready for it. Here's the turnover. Leilua had a loose carry. There might have been a dragon hand in there, but play on Michael Wayman out of dummy half. No one was prepared for the big fella to take that run. You see that the Roosters all sliding to the left. They left it with Minicello and Mitch Orbison, who had to move from the outside. He was no chance of stopping Wayman from that close. What an effort. Scored a try in front of an adoring crowd at Wynn Jubilee at Cogra. 
earlier this season. There's another one to his credit here today after playing the City Country fixture. Three days ago, big effort to back up today on short rest. The kick is good. It's 18-16 to the Roosters. And what an absorbing final 14 minutes or so we have here on Anzac Day. Oh, aren't you glad? Aren't you glad to be here at Allianz Stadium today? Anzac Day, it's a great day for the country. Stay behind, and it's a great right. day for the game. And we've got an absolute cracking finish yeah, coming up. In front of more than 40,000 to a regular season game in the NRL in 2012. And Nasta, with the restart, goes down to Soward. He gives it to the man who got across the line, Michael Wayman, bringing it back out. Grabbed there by Bosden and also Kennedy, and now a scuffle. Has he lost the ball? He has. Kennedy, it wasn't a scuffle. It was a dive for the ball. And here are the Roosters. A chance to set the record straight after giving up points. Masoy plays it. Now Friend fires it out the back. It goes to ground. Takarangi picks it up. Does a little step. And he'll play it 10 metres out from the Dragons line. Friend comes back to Bosden. He played his part in the ball coming loose. And the restart by the Dragons. Now Pierce has to wait for the pass. He gives it to Warburson. He usually runs such a nice line. Doesn't get a chance from close range on this occasion. Though. Friend to the short side. They wrap around through Kenny Dow. Back towards the middle. He showed it. And is stopped by Merrin. A metre away. He'll play it on the last. Friend to Pierce. It goes to Anasta. Anasta. You take your chances when you get them. And you make your own luck, and a piece of luck for the Roosters. Well, he was pushing up beautifully there, Braith and Asta. I don't think he thought the pass was coming via the one from Jake Friend to Mitchell Pierce. There's the turnover. The ball was slipping up on top of his shoulder there. He just couldn't keep control of it, Michael Wayman. Jake Friend had to run 10 metres to get to dummy half. It was almost to play the ball without a dummy half. Friend scooted in there, threw an absolute bullet through the hands of Mitchell Pearce. Braith and Asta there to take the ricochet. And what a hit back. It was points. It was a, it was a try for the Dragons. Wayman off the back of a mistake off points from the Roosters. And then the Dragons have obliged and done the same thing. Tit for tat in the second half. And again... A chance for Braith and Asta. Such an important kick. Michael Wayman. Boy. Talk about from chocolates to boiled lollies in a very short space of time for the big front rower. He just jammed up underneath his ribs. The ball started to pop up on his shoulder. He just couldn't hang on to it, Wayman. And it's cost them. By more than a converted try. A miss by Brayton Nasta after converting one from out near the sideline. A much easier attempt, and it goes wide. And importantly for the Dragons, it stays at just six the difference. No, it's a big miss from Anasta. It was very Behind kickable. Time, you're right. Dragons, no, they're still in with a huge chance. Ten to go. I got a Benny Pierce waits for the kick. And he gives it off to Arona. One, next round. Move! How does this one end? A couple of errors have cost both teams a try in the last five minutes. It's the Roosters with the advantage at 22 16, looking to break the streak of four straight wins on Anzac Day by the Dragons. Move now! Kenny Dow will play it at the 40 metre line. Minicello will take the carry and look for a fast play. The ball for the kickers to do their business on the last tackle. Good effort by the fullback, and Pierce has no pressure on him as a result. And still, it's Morris out there playing on the right wing with Nightingale doing the honours as far as the fullback play is concerned for St George Illawarra. And he's at dummy half, giving it off to Vito. His best work has been at this end of the field. Well, he did supply, of course, the tap back 
for Matt Cooper to score the try in the first half. Now Lattimore. Within 10 on the halfway line. Not a person has left this stadium. With all to play for in the final 10 minutes. They come back to the middle. And they'll play it there through Nightingale. Fien gives it to Merrin. They get through the tackle of Bosden. Grabbed though by Orbison and also Guerra. And perhaps a kick to come on the last. Goes to Soward and he puts it in the air. Some pressure on Tungavay and also Minicello. Minicello. Well, Hornby was up a long time before the ball came down. And Minicello slumping back to the ground made a very good catch. Yeah, great take, Anthony Minicello. What a game he's had at the back there. Arona, good pressure from him, really, to make the kick from South. Not exactly where he wanted to land it. His parents getting into dummy half to help out the Roosters from their own end. The pattern repeats. A fast man on play five to open up some space for the kicker. Pierce was bumped to the ground there. We'll wait and see if there's a whistle. Matt Checkin had a chat with his official. And ben Cummins said it's all yours and no call. Despite Pierce being taken to ground after the kick. Now Young, the ball back to the middle and they turned it over. Well, the ball went back to the middle because Brett Morris just ducked his head. Young turned it back inside to Brett Morris, who ducked, thinking the pass wasn't for him, but there was no other dragon around. It was meant for him. A massive chance to perhaps put this one away. Here's Friend backing his way towards the line. No call of held. He's still going. It's going to be play on. Now he's held. And Nasta from close range. Takarangi. That was important because a good charge by a forward from close range there off the back of what Friend did. The Roosters could have been in. He feeds it back to Anasta. He gives it to Arona. As they get themselves sorted on the right-hand side for a play on the last. Does he kick a field goal? Pierce is deep. He's thinking field goal. His kick is off the upright. Pressure on Vito. He gets away from Guerra. He comes to Pierce. Brings it back to the field of play. They'll try and push him back in. And they do. Well, they're not happy with the call. Oh, a penalty. To the descent from Jamie Soward. And it's a penalty right in front. That's the rules. The rules are he wasn't on your play. He was also on a defending play. You can't do that. Are you saying he wasn't on our play? I was saying that, that he what? wasn't held. You were saying my... he, we didn't touch our player. I said... I've just said he wasn't held, call. mate. That's a big I call. know it is a big call, a big mate, call. and it's right. He right was. It was on Jamie Soward. You can hear him give the referee Matt check and a gobful after the decision. There's the Mitchell Pierce field goal. It hits the upright. The bounce to Vito. Vito did a magnificent job. Beat a couple of roosters. Beat more than a couple. But then they held him up and pushed him back into the field of play. Back in the in goal. Vito stepping around, getting outside Pierce. He's initially held up there by Anthony Minicello. They only have to put him a couple of yards back. The Dragons' contention through Ben Hornby is that when Nightingale got involved and tried to push Vito forward, that is construed as a tackle. That is certainly the case at the other end of the field when you're trying to score a try. In that situation there, though, I'm happy that that is play on. Yeah, I don't think he's... It, we're still going as we go back out the weight points. Braith Anasta puts it through the posts. 24 16, the Roosters over the Dragons. And as far as Dragons fans are concerned, there'll be a touch of controversy about the play. And there is the descent from Jamie Soward. Got in the face of Matt Checken. And that's what Ben Hornby was questioning Matt Checken about, about the other Stay player behind, getting Tommy involved. Run. Jason Nightingale. They'll go with the short restart. Less than five remaining. It comes down. Minatello can't grab it. Nightingale can. It's the Dragons looking to hit straight back. And they will. Prior for the line. And the Dragons, there is life. They're not done with yet. They score off the
the shallow restart. What a piece of play for Jason Nightingale. Able to take the ball above Anthony Minicello, then go on a diagonal run across the field, pick up, and there's a the kick from Ben Hornby. It's an absolute peach. Terrific work by Nightingale. Pushes off a couple of the Roosters. There's the diagonal run across the field. And the kick's missed. It stays at four, the difference. A quick kick the by kick's Jamie good. Sowell. It went through. It looked as though it missed. We came back to the action quickly. 24, 22. Let's take a look at it once again. Off the left hand upright, across the face and through. Boy. Wow. <laughs> it's a cliche, but it is all happening here at Allianz Stadium. And we've still got three and a half to go. And after that man, Matt Pryor crossed over in the corner. The Roosters taking their time. finish we have here. The kick from Anasta goes down to Nightingale. And it's Lattimore who brings it back out. Jack Hull here, Hull. The team who can struggle to score second half points at times. The Dragons have two tries in this second period. They still trail by two with less than three on the clock. What do they go to? Sowd and Hornby, the money men, wait for it, and here they are now, getting a chance. It goes to Sowd, who puts a step on both ways. Good tackle by Aiden Guerra. Give him room. That'll be the fourth, and every play counts now. Hornby going back towards the middle. The Roosters desperately hanging on. On the last tackle, Sowd will chip it. Friend is there, take forward by Nightingale, who volleyed it. It sits up, it almost hits a post. Parrot is swamped, and the Dragons will get it back. They will. Sam Parrot able to clean things up. There's the bench. They look on as they go awfully close. A little chip by Jamie Sauer. Jason Nightingale couldn't get his hands to it. He got his foot to it. The ball sat up in the end goal. Parrot was able to clean things up. They'll get one more set as the Roosters will take their entire 40 seconds that they've got. There'll be a stack of time here for the Dragons. And it's a shallow drop out, bounces up for Hornby. And Dan Hunt brings it back to St George Illawarra. Can they make it five victories in a row on Anzac Day? And steal this one at the death. They're just inside the 20. Moving now, let go. I'll play it through Merrin. Fiend gets out from dummy half. He goes to Hornby. Out the back to Soward. Wider still for Pryor. Looking for a double. He keeps it alive. It goes back to Young. Now Hornby. And the game in which he breaks the record. He gives it to Merrin. Now Cray. He'll take it to ground. Nine metres out. Fast play the ball. Fiend. Wayman. Wayman again. Gives it to Cray. Ben Cray. He scores. Cray scores for the Dragons. And they've done it again on Anzac Day. Unbelievable. That is unbelievable stuff. The stadium erupts. The Dragons bench go up. Look at the red and white. At Allianz Stadium, they were no chance, they were gone. The Dragons were gone. A miracle play. Only minutes earlier. That is super stuff and just... How are they feeling? The Roosters. In the 80th minute, having seen the Dragons score two tries in the final five minutes to come from... 22-16 deficit made 24-16 after the descent penalty conceded by Jamie Soward. And they've scored two tries from that point on. It's almost what the Roosters did against the Rabbitohs back in round one on Monday Night Football. Ben Hornby, as we said in the game in which he breaks... 
the record for most games by a Dragon. Adds the extra two, 28 to 24 at full time. And on this grand occasion, it's again the Dragons who are triumphant. Well, I can't believe it. I, I really can't believe what we've just seen. The short kickoff for the second last try. Jason Nightingale, the work he did. The pass that he delivered to Matt Pryor for him to be able to score. Jamie Soward's his, his attempt at, at goal hits the post and bounce in. And then they're able to come up with a try right on the death. What a finish. What a game it's been here. Absolutely remarkable. And we'll hear from some of the stars of this Anzac Day Classic in a moment. Mitchell Pearce could have done absolutely no more than he did. Try and get his team across the line. Scored that tremendous try back in the 59th minute. Chasing through off his own kick. And they are stunned. There's no other word for it. They cannot believe that the Dragons have snatched that victory from them. A remarkable day in front of more than 40,000 fans here at Allion Stadium. Let's go downstairs to Andy. Dean Young, can you explain how this happened? True believers. I don't know, we never give up, eh? Benny Orme kept on saying behind the trial line, he said, we're still in this. We've just got to keep competing, and we did that. Character building. Yeah, it is. It's, um, you know, we, we lost both Scott early, and they stuck me out on the right edge all game, and we had a couple of little changes there, and a lot of Blaze backing up, and it was a real gutsy win, eh? A game that was fitting for the occasion today. Yeah, it certainly is. I tell you what, all those boys on this field feel very privileged to play on a day like this, um, and it's certainly a day we won't forget. Are these the ones you miss come 2013? Yeah, certainly, mate. I love this game. It's, uh, it's the best game of the year for the Dragons, that's for sure, and the Roosters. And uh, as I said, it's such a privilege to play on this day and one I'll certainly uh, won't forget, considering it's my last one. Congratulations, mate. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Absolutely gutted as this bloke, uh, Mitch Pearce. I'll ask you the same question I did to Dean Young. How on earth did that happen? Oh, mate, it's shattering. Um, yeah, it was a massive game for us to get back up the top top of the ladder and um, you know, I thought we just we did everything to deserve the win so I'm shattered mate it's all it's a bad feeling. Result average performance uh, so much better than your last upstart. It was and um, yeah, the last game we, the boys worked really hard during the week to turn it around. Uh, it's, to come down to that it's pretty shattering but you know, it's still early in the year so we'll turn it around. If we, if we keep that kind of game and attitude we'll win most games I think. A couple of blokes put their hands up yourself Anthony Minicello great games. Thanks, mate. Um, yeah, Mini was great. No, the whole team was awesome. It's just boys are hurting because they put in so much effort. So mate, it's one of those games that you know, it hurts pretty pretty hard, but that's footy. Cheers, mate. Thanks, mate. What a wonderful game between the St George Illawarra Dragons and the Sydney Roosters. Played in true Anzac spirit. Joining us on stage this evening is the RSL New South Wales State President, Mr Don Rowe. Sydney Cricket and Sports Ground Trust CEO. Mr. Jamie Barkley, the Australian Rugby League Commission Chief Executive, Mr. David Gallup, Dragons League legend, Mr. Norm Proven, and to George Illawarra Dragons Chairman, Mr. Warren Lockwood. Now, before we get to the presentation of the Anzac Day Cup, we would like to acknowledge a significant milestone in the career of Dragons captain, Ben Hornby. Today, today's match marks Ben's 257th appearance for the Dragons seeing him surpass the great Norm Proven as the most capped Dragons player of all time. We would like to call on Mr Norm Proven to present today's match ball to the captain, Ben Hornby. Congratulations, Ben. Good ask Mr. Don Rowe to present the Spirit of Anzac medal to the man of the match. And the man of the match for tonight, so this afternoon's magnificent game, is Ben Hornby. <laughs> now we would like to call on the Australian Rugby League Commission Chief Executive Officer, Mr. David Gallup, and Norm Proven to present the Anzac Day Cup 
to our winning captain, Ben Hornby. Um, first of all, I think I'd like to thank the Roosters. That was obviously a great game for everybody. Um, without them, it wouldn't be such a good clash every year. I'd also like to thank uh, all the Anzacs that came out today and the past and present ones as well. It's their day. We're just privileged to play on this day and we hope we did it uh, justice out there today. To all the fans that come out each year and support us. It really is a great day. Without you, it wouldn't be possible. To all my teammates over there, we gave everything we had today right to the last minute. And that's what it's all about. Thank you.